Greetings from the European Parliament studio in Strasbourg. My name is Ilza Nagla and today we will be talking about hate speech. Is our fight against it successful or maybe it's just all getting worse? And today I'm joined by Alice Ba Kunke. She's an MEP from Sweden, uh, from the political group of Greens. And before she became a member of the parliament, she was also a TV journalist and a minister, Minister for Culture and Democracy. Yes, very glad that you could, uh, could be here today. Um, some experts say that uh, during the pandemic, the hate speech specifically against women and journalists have uh, become worse, has increased. Is, do you feel that uh, as well and why is that? Well, f first of all, thank you for, for having me on, on, on this uh, interview and yes, uh, unfortunately, this is a fact. Uh, from the all uh, different uh, member countries and around the world, uh, we get the same messages and when we now investigate how hate crime has developed during the pandemic. And it has become worse, and it is still worse when it comes uh, to, to women, towards women. It was like that before the pandemic, but it has worsened even more. And we see a clear connection connection between the domestic violence that also increased during the pandemic. When people were locked in uh, to their homes, uh, their apartments and, and houses, we also saw that the violence uh, and even the killings of women and girls and the rape and so on and so forth increased, but also the hate on social media towards uh, women and girls. People just try to get their frustration out, probably. Well, I think it's a bigger problem than, than that. Of course, many people are frustrated. I mean, we all are from, from our, our different way of lives. Uh, it, the pandemic has been and still is uh, uh, an awful fact. But the hate towards girls and women is a bigger problem than frustration. We know that it is men and it is young men, boys, that are fostered with uh, hate uh, towards uh, girls and women. And this is a big uh, society problem. This is one of our biggest challenges, that we need to make sure that uh, men, boys, also are part of fighting, because uh, everybody understands that we can't uh, build societies where women are threatened to their lives in words, but also physically in their daily lives. If we talk more about the hate speech on internet platforms, have you uh, encountered it yourself as well? Has it been against you? Yes, uh, and uh, of course. Uh, and it's so sad to say that in such a simple way, because you, I, everyone who are on social media, or uh, uh, of course as, as a public figure, as a politician, you are uh, 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 threatened in, in all kinds of way, uh, not at least on social media. But a bigger problem is that it's also uh, any ordinary young girl, any ordinary young woman who maybe have thoughts or ideas or just want to talk about uh, anything. It could be uh, uh, girls on social media, uh, on YouTube, uh, uh, doing vlogs about makeup and people are hating them in the comments. Uh, uh, so, and this is really hindering young women from being on social media. And this, is, and this is serious because somebody might think that, oh, well, who cares? She was talking about makeup and, and, uh, and, and clothes. Uh, it is not a big problem if she isn't there anymore. But it is a big problem because this young woman, she had the right to be there and she shouldn't be hindered in her way to express herself. So this is why it's also a, a feministic movement that is needed to, so that we, I mean, when I'm on social media, I always talk about politics, but I'm also a defender of the young girl talking about makeup because her freedom is as important as my freedom. But some might say that, uh, yes, somebody writes a nasty comment to her, but she will never uh, have it in a real life. So it's just, you know, just words. Mm. Well, you could think that, but all scientific uh, and research shows that words matter. The, the more we use hate speech and those kind of words, the more you can see an increase in vi of violence in real life. So it's, it's a clear connection between what people say and what people do. It's about values, because behind every, every uh, action, uh, there is a thought, 
and the thought is based on the value, what you think in your, in your mind. So this is why it's so important and it's also why it's so complex. European Commission now has said that, has promised that it will try to include hate speech and hate crime in the list of EU crimes. Mm -hmm. What will that change? Well, that's a good question. First of all, it's great that they do, because this has been a, a debate for a long time in several member states. So it's so important that the Commission listens and really put forward this as, as a suggestion to, to include hate speech and, and hate crime into the list of EU crimes. But what, will it, what change will that make? I mean, it, it will mean that we have a bigger tool to make sure that every member state also implement this into their own national laws, because it's a sad fact that it's not the same in every country. Some countries have a developed hate speech, hate crime, juridical system uh, model, but some doesn't. So we will have a stronger force in, in really making sure that all 27 member states uh, do this. Uh, and hopefully it can also be uh, like a little whip uh, when, when uh, cases are brought to to in front of the law in member states, people can say, look, we have uh, this hate speech and, and hate crime on the EU crime list. So it could be used also in, in uh, well, strengthening this uh, fight in every single member state. Do you think for hate speech people should go to prison? I think that it's important that every single member state and all the lawyers and the, the judicial system in every single member state have this on their list so that when they, when the police in the uh, national uh, state investigates a crime, also see if was this just uh, somebody talking to another person or was there somebody talking to another person and hating because this person is a woman, for example. And if they can prove that, it should be, uh, uh, the, the punishment should be harder, yes. Even prison sentence? Uh, well, that depends on what, what the crime was, mm -hmm. but it should be a, a worsening fact if it also was a hate crime, and this is very important. A couple of years ago, uh, European Union agreed with Microsoft, uh, Twitter, uh, YouTube and, and Facebook that they will kind of work together to take down all the hate, uh, hate comments, all the hate speech within hopefully 24 hours. Do you think that has worked? No, uh, we know it hasn't worked. I mean, of course, some progress have been made. You know, all these big platforms who earn Mil billions and billions every year, and uh, several of them don't even pay taxes uh, in our countries or within the EU. They have these policies on how to behave on, on their platforms, but they are not living up to their policies. And they say, well, we can't, uh, uh, we shouldn't uh, hinder people for expressing themselves and so on and so forth. But what is a crime in real life is also a crime on the internet. And the, these platforms need to shape up and make sure that their arena, who they are providing for, also is an arena that follows the law. But some would say that there's always risk to kind of breach free speech because he, people have to right to express opinion that they have a right to disagree. Um, and maybe they, in, they have a right to call maybe others in not such pretty names, right? Mm -hmm. No, uh, because you don't. The, free sp the freedom of speech is fantastic, but it comes with limits. And this, I think, is very important for everyone to know, because people, some, too many people think that you can say whatever you want. No, you can't, because you have not the right to uh, put hate on another person. That's against the law. So the free freedom of speech comes with limits, very clear limits. And that's why it's so important that we are, we are following the rule of law, that not, it, can't, it can't be politicians like I who say, oh, this was okay and that was not okay. It shouldn't be me. It should be, I mean, it, it should be lawyers. It should be the law that decides, uh, not uh, individuals and definitely not politicians. When you as a politician, when you talk to young audiences, let's say teenagers, what 
do you have a feeling that they actually are bothered by that? Maybe women, uh, girls who have sort of received that hate speech as what well, are worried about it. Are young boys, uh, you said that it's mostly men who do that, are they as worried about it? No, unfortunately, uh, the research shows that uh, young uh, men, uh, old, older men, young men, and even boys don't care as much as uh, young women, girls, and, and grown-up women. And this is, uh, this is really uh, saddening, but also a big problem. Because if young boys and young men and men don't understand that they are, per definition, per definition part of the problem, then we have such a big problem. And it's so important now, in, in, for example, in Sweden, there are movements going on among men, young men, uh, forming groups where they say, well, I don't want to live or be part of a society where we hate uh, young women or women. We need to shape up and we need to take a lead for this development. And this is so fantastic because this is nothing that only we women should do or should drive. We need the men to be part of this uh, movement and this change. But the whole hate speech is actually much wider than just against uh, women, right? It's mm -hmm. against sexual minorities. Yes. Uh, about the LGBT community, f against different races, different uh, political beliefs, different uh, religious beliefs. So if you would kind of have a, would need to, to kind of with a broader look on it, what is the biggest proportion of the hate speech? Where is the ma biggest problems? We know uh, also looking at the research that the ones who are hated the most and also hindered the most in their freedom of speech, because this is like the real problem that we are putting people, locking them out. We hate them so much so they don't want to take part of the discussions going on in society. And we can see the ones who are affected the most by the hate are the groups that you identified. It's young women, it's LGBTQI, uh, persons, it's minorities, uh, religious minorities uh, and, and other minorities. So if we want those groups, persons in those groups to be part of what we discuss in society and part of how we form our society, we need to make sure that they can be there and are not hated so, so much that they uh, shut up and, and go away. Probably uh, the children and, and teenagers uh, will spend more and more time on the social media. And as we discussed, uh, the, the deal with Facebook, uh, Microsoft, YouTube and, Twi uh, and Twitter didn't really work out that well. What is your feeling? You have three daughters. Will they uh, live or uh, sort of be in the, in the digital platforms where the hate speech decreases? Or do we actually have a possibility to decrease it? Well, I think uh, for, uh, for the coming years, unfortunately, I believe it will uh, increase. But I think that a change will come. But I think it, it will need to be get worse until it gets better. And we can also see a polarization in our societies where, for example, uh, uh, many uh, uh, young girls who have uh, uh, possibilities who have parents with money or with knowledge and platforms, they can choose not to be in some rooms and have other rooms, have other platforms to express themselves. But many other girls who don't have money, who, who don't have the knowledge, or who live in societies where they don't see so many possibilities, they will be forced into this arena where they are threatened in a very bad way and meeting hate. Um. From your experience, from what you see, what your uh, daughters do, what kind of advice you could give to a young girl who receives a hate speech? Well, uh, I'm not in favor of giving advice to young girls because I think I need their advice. But I think one of the most important thing is to know your rights. Uh, it's not right. And, and this, th you shouldn't be, uh, you shall never accept uh, hate towards you, no matter what you are doing or say, don't accept hate and talk to a grown-up, uh, because this is the most important thing. So know your rights. 
Thank you so much for joining us today. And as we just talked, the hate speech is here. It's probably here to stay for some time. And it will take a hard work from everybody, from politicians, from the IT companies, even from us, from, from regular people, uh, to stop it, to stop it in future so our kids and grandkids have a safer, safer world, safer digital world. Goodbye. <laughs>